Hello NASCAR fans, I'm Chris Terrell, I'm here for RotoPros.com to bring you my weekly daily fantasy NASCAR post-qualifying picks video. Before getting into the picks, if you're not a RotoPros member yet, make sure to go over to RotoPros.com, click that yellow sign up button in the top right hand corner, and this week using promo code NASCAR you can get 50% off of a weekly monthly subscription, which gives you access to all of our premium content. We cover NFL, NHL, NBA, NASCAR, PGA, MLB starting in two weeks. We cover soccer. Pretty much if there's a DFS sport out there played on DraftKings and FanDuel, we can cover it. It also gives you access to our members-only community chat. We've got a bu bunch of different channels set up here for all the different sports. For NASCAR, I've put in a couple of the top news people in the sport who follow along track to track. They're there every single week. They're in the pits. They're in the garages. They're talking to drivers. They're talking to engineers. They're talking to crew chiefs. Best way to get the most information all in one spot here in our Rotor Pros community chat. Sign up today, you're not going to be disappointed. With that, let's jump into this week's picks. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series heads to Dover International Speedway for the Gander RV 400 this Sunday. It is a one mile concrete track. As you can see on the cheat sheet, I don't have any track type history this week. It is a very unique track. It is a one mile, but unlike the other one miles in Phoenix and New Hampshire, which are both flat, this one has 20, uh, Dover has 24 degrees of banking in the corner, so it's a high bank concrete. Um, it's close, similar to a short track. You could compare it probably best to Bristol, which is also concrete and high banked as well. But uh, being one mile, we are seeing some very fast speeds. And with this new package, we've seen even more speeds. Looking at qualifying times um, over the weekend here, last year the qualifying time for the pole winner was 158, 103 miles an hour and a lap of 22, 770. This year, about 7, 8 mile an hour faster, 165.96 miles an hour at a, at a lap time of 21.692. So the speeds, especially going into the corners, the corner entry and stuff, the guys can hold the pedal down a lot more without having to let off just because of that downforce on this track. So they are seeing some very high speeds. The drivers are talking about, you know, they're getting close to that, uh, you know, the danger line. And then the other thing that comes in here with Dover are... The, the track is very narrow on the back stretch, so I mean if there's going to be a car that gets in the wall, starts spinning, it's likely going to take out multiple cars. You see a lot of multi-car wrecks here, and it can be a very long race, three and a half, four hours going round and round on this uh, one-mile track. So very difficult track this week. We have seen practice one qualifying yesterday. There was fog this morning, so we didn't get a practice two. So drivers with this new package in race trim have only had that one final practice, and you know, you've seen some guys go out, make very short runs, come in the garage, make adjustments. So I'm looking a little bit more this week, just scrolling over and looking at the model a little bit here. I'm looking at that 10 lap average in that final practice a lot. I want to see who's got a good long run car. So that's something I'm looking at a little bit more than the one lap speeds. And you can see some guys, there's big differences. Kevin Harvick, practice three was 14th, 10 lap average, he was fourth. Brad Kozlowski, 15th in the one lap time fifth in the 10 lap averages so that's just something i'm looking at long run cars guys that can make it to the end um obviously you got to get through the wrecks getting onto pit road is very tough here as well so we're gonna have to watch out for speeding pen penalties and uh, commitment line violations and stuff like that so there's going to be a lot of variance here this week but overall i'm going to be looking for some veterans some guys going to be concentrating on uh, i've got 25 weight here on track history over the last two years which is four races they race here twice a year so i'm going to be looking at that guys that are coming in with good form a um, little bit of uh, career track history, but then, you know, qualifying. Going ahead and looking at the last six races here at Dover, something I added this week. If you scroll down below each race here, you can see how many guys had positive place differential, how many guys had double-digit place differential. That stands out, as there's been not very many drivers that pick up that double-digit place differential um, at this race. That's going to you know, probably be the trend here again this week, simply because they've gone back to single-car qualifying. So with that, we're not going to get a lot of fast cars. They're going to be starting back in the field just because of some of the oddities with the um, with the draft and some of the stuff that was going on at some of the tracks for qualifying. So we're not going to see that anymore. Generally, we're going to see the fastest cars starting at the front, which, again, is going to reduce the place differential value. And then you add in Dover, which this bottom line here, correlation to start finish, just looking at what the correlation is between starting position and finishing position, and it is one of the highest um, 
in the entire NASCAR circuit, at, you know, looking at tracks. So last year it was over 0.7 correlation. And for, for those of you new to correlation, we're looking at a scale of minus one, which is like negative correlation, all the way up to just plus one. So you got a negative one to plus one, and plus one will obviously be the highest correlation. So getting very close to that tells you how how much you need to be starting closer to the front at this racetrack. In comparison, looking at Talladega last week, we were looking at correlations of in between 0.2 and 0.5 um, over the last six races at that track. So very high correlation here, so we want guys starting at the front. So that's going to be even more important on FanDuel where the place differential isn't quite as important as the finishing position. Um, so for FanDuel, you're definitely going to want guys to start in close closer to the front. There is some opportunities for some place differential value for DraftKings where that is a little more, but uh, for the most part, going back to the last six races here, we're looking for at least one dominator. Um, there's been at least one driver to lead 100 plus laps in each of the last six races, and four times two drivers have done that. So definitely looking for the dominator points there. So let's just jump in and we'll take a look at some of my core plays here for this week, uh, going off of that data and looking at the model. <clears throat> so first up, for core drivers, I'm looking at Kevin Harvick. He's the third most expensive on both sites, which has seemed very nice value for how good he's been here. Um, he's also starting sixth. He was fourth in that 10-lap average in that final practice. I'm just going to go ahead and have a look at his track history here to show you how consistent he has been at Dover. He's also led a ton of laps as well. Sixth, first, 17th, ninth. So kind of up and down. He's got two wins since uh, 2015 and he's led 487 laps here in the last two races, so in the 2018 season. So he's definitely someone I'm looking at that can be a dominator this week. He showed that long run speed. Going down a little bit more, um, number one and two in my model this week, that doesn't even factor in the DraftKings price, and if it did, they would be even further ahead in the model. It would be Chase Elliott and Martin Truex Jr. Elliott is coming off of his first win of the season last week, Chevy's first win of the season, Henrik Motorsports' first win at Talladega last week. Looked very strong. Chevy's finished one, two, three. This week, Elliott comes back to a track where he won here in the fall, and he has been top five finishes in five of his six races here over his career. So a very good track for him. He's coming in hot. He's, he's definitely going to be number one in my model. Going to have a lot of them. I think he can get out front and lead some laps early on in this race before, say, someone like a, a Kevin Harvick um, or anyone else that's kind of in that top five and ten lap averages can get up there and lead some laps as well. So I think he's got a good shot to be a dominator. I think he's got a good shot to win the race, and he is very cheap. No, I wouldn't say very cheap, but he's very affordable on both sides, um, safe in all formats. Then Martin Trex Jr., he's right there as well at 10-2 on DraftKings, 13-2 on FanDuel. He's starting 13th, so he gives us some nice place differential value as well, starting just outside the top 10, and he was second in one-lap times in the final practice, third in that 10-lap averages, and he's also been good here as well. Just have a quick look at his recent uh, track history here at Dover. 15th in the playoff race last year, but before that was 4th, 4th, 3rd. He won the 2016 playoff race, uh, 9th, 11th, 6th, 7th, 6th. So 8 of the last 10 races he's finished inside the top 10. He's showing really good speeds. He's going to be another core driver. If you're building cash lines, I would definitely try and get Truex and Elliott together and then uh, move down and get some value guys from there to make it all tie together. Like Eric Jones this week, he gives you some place differential value as well, starting 15th, uh, top five speeds in both one lap and 10 lap averages there. Kyle Larson, very cheap on DraftKings this week, uh, going to be very hard to, um, to go away from him. He's had some terrible luck this year with some crashes and stuff like that, sits down in the standings. He's only got two top 10s on the year, but as you can see, he's been very good here. Um, we'll go over and look at some track history for him. So in the last two years, he's got two top fives, three top tens. He's led 378 laps, which is just behind Kevin Harvick. Very good to see. Over his career, he's been he's raced here 10 times, finished inside the top 10 seven times with an 8.8 .8 average finish, which is second to only Daniel Suarez. Who we're going to talk about next? Um, Suarez has finished top 10 in all four of his races here in his career with one top five. Go look at the speeds this weekend. He's been very fast. Starting 14th also gives us some place differential value. Sixth in both 1 and 10 lap averages in that final practice. Everything looking good for him. Safe in all formats at 7700 Excellent price. A little bit more expensive on FanDuel, but definitely safe in all formats on both sites. Chris Buescher, he didn't run a 10 lap, 10 lap uh, run in that final practice, which was a little bit concerning for me. 
Um, but he is starting 30th, and if we want to just go look at his track history here is what really stood out to me. He's got, I wouldn't say he's going to be a top 20 car by any means. He was 24 from the one lap times. But in his races here over his career, he has finished inside that top 30 in every single race with top 25 finishes in five of those six races. So definitely looking at him at his price at 7300 6800 on FanDuel especially. His best value is on FanDuel. They're under 7 k And then moving down a couple of these uh, low-end drivers that I like. I like Daniel Hemrick. He was really good in the Xfinity series here. He's finished, I believe, seventh or better in three straight. Yeah, with a fourth and a third in there as well. So he was really good here in the Xfinity series while making his first start in the Cup series here. Starting 23rd, a little bit risky, but the price uh, definitely helps helps you fit in two of those top guys. Bubba Wallace, um, going back to him this week in the sub-6K range, starting 27th. He has been pretty decent here as well, you know, considering the price. Um, top 25s in his bo both his races here last year. So there's not a ton of upside here, but for the price under 6 I think it can help you um, fit it all together as well. And then Michael McDowell's one that I will consider in all formats. You know, usually I'll go get two of those top guys, like I said, with Truex and Elliott, and then mix in a low-end guy for cash games. McDowell might be that guy for me here this week. Um, he's starting 26th. But going and looking, um, he's just outside the the top 20 in average finish over the last 10 races here, but he's finished 26th, 22nd, 27th, 19th, and 20th. So he has had some success here uh, in the past, and he's only 4,500 on Fando and 5,300 on DK. So you don't need a whole bunch from him um, if you you know you nail in two of these top guys like a Truex and Elliott and Cash with McDowell leaves you a good, uh, pretty darn good average going left with some safety in there as well. So we're just going to have a look at that and see what we have here going over to DraftKings. So if you go Truex and you plug in Elliott and then you go in and you give McDowell, leaves an average of 8,200 left over um, for the rest of your lineup on DraftKings, which which is a really good way to go. So that's probably the way I'm leaning in cash games right now is that uh, three combo and then uh, I'll fill in around that with the other guys that I talked about. Um, before we go here, a couple GPP plays I'm looking at. Kyle Busch, for sure, is the most expensive driver on both sites. He started in 22nd. My own, the only thing I didn't make him a... The only reason I didn't make him a core driver this week is I went back and looked at his finishes. This is definitely not one of his best tracks, even though he has one here. He's won at every track on the circuit, but this, this one especially... He's had some rough goes of it here, uh, especially in the first, the first race of the season. He's a little bit better when it comes to the playoffs, but... Looking at here, when he doesn't start outside of the top 10, or when he doesn't start inside the top 10, he's that's when he hasn't had his best finishes, um, a second here. But outside of that, he started like pretty much inside the top 5 in 8 of the last 10, inside the top 10, and 9 of the last 10 races. So starting back in 27 seconds, a little bit risky, especially for the most expensive driver. Um, but if there's anyone that can make it through the field, it's him. So definitely want to fit him in some GPP lineups. Ryan Blaney, I just think with Eric Jones... Larson, Suarez, and then above him with Harvick, Truex, and Elliott. He's going to be a little bit lower owned this week. Didn't show terrible times, and he hasn't been terrible here. Um, so definitely looking at him as a GPP pivot. Same thing goes with Eric Almirola. He's kind of sandwiched between some chalky plays there as well. Start in seventh, uh, showed top five speed in one lap, 11th in 10 lap averages. They got a really good team. The Fords have been strong. I think they can make the right adjustments, and he makes a good GPP play as well. Same with Austin Dillon. Again, sandwiched between... Uh, Busher and Suarez, who I think both will be higher owned. Austin Dillon has been, has had some upside here. He has shown his upside at this track. So definitely consider him a little bit lower owned than those other chalky plays as well. So that covers all my plays. One thing I wanted to do is just kind of show you with these screens. So we're going to go Truex, Elliott, and McDowell like we talked about on each one of these. And then what we're going to do is just kind of show you how I go about multi-entering and using my core to go ahead and create multiple lineups. Uh, this one here is the $3.20 max. I love going in that one, um, doing the 20 lineups. I haven't had time to do the 150, but these are the ones I've been concentrating on this year. So we'll just start with three and go from there. So a couple other drivers that I'd like to mention. You can easily get Kyle Larson, Suarez, um, you could even plug in, and then you got your choice between like Eric Jones, who I talked about as a core driver. So that would be one way to go. 
And then for my next one, you know, you could go and switch it up. And you can use some GPP plays, make some pivots there. Um, you could go up to Harvick and you come down and grab Hamrick. And then you got 7,200 left um, and go with one of those guys. Or you can go down, um, you know, you get McDowell. So it's a little bit more of a stars and scrubs way to go. And then I'll go and I'll, you know, just keep switching it up. We'll start with Jones here and Larson. And that leaves you 8,000. So you can go like with Newman, Suarez, Stenhouse. There's a lot of options um, when you start building your core. Now, when your core goes off, those three drivers that are in your core, and you've built, say, out of my 20 lineups, I'm probably going to use that core in, say, six or seven. When your core three drivers goes off and you've built seven lineups with those three drivers, say, Elliott wins, Truex finishes second, McDowell gets up there and finishes 21st and, and gets enough points for him to hit value, your other three drivers, you're going to have more chance of hitting the nuts um, and winning a GPP in that in, in this case, doing it this way, as you're going to get enough mix of the other three drivers throughout your lineups. And if you're doing, say, 150, you just need to extrapolate that a little bit further to the point where you put that core three together and then maybe you add, like you said, Daniel Suarez. So then you've got your core four, then you do that through five, and then you remove Suarez and put Jones in and go and so on and so on. And it just helps you to multi-enter contests and give you the best chance at winning rather than going and building you know, a bunch of unique lineups um, where you really need to hit that one. Well, if I hit my core, I want the best chance of winning that GPP, so I'm going to mix in those other three drivers. If you want more help with this, definitely hit me up um, in the DFSR chat room and the Roto Pros member chat room as well. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, Jaeger underscore bombs nine, or you can leave your comments in the video below this here. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching the video. Let's go build some lineups for the race tomorrow and get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.